Hi, this is Leah from Open Intro. In this video, we will see how and when to apply the binomial formula. The Substance Abuse and Mental Health Services Administration estimated that 70% of 18 to 20 year olds consumed alcoholic beverages in 2008. A. Suppose a random sample of 10 18 to 20 year olds is taken. Is the use of the binomial distribution appropriate for calculating the probability that exactly six consumed alcoholic beverages? Explain. When we hear the exactly six, that makes us think binomial formula. But before we apply that formula, we should make sure the conditions are met. The first one, the most important, is that the trials are independent. So we have a random sample. So because it is a random sample, we can assume that the individuals are independent of each other. If, for example, you took as your sample a group of 10 very good friends, we couldn't think of those individuals and their responses to this question as independent of each other. Also, of course, to have uh, the binomial formula apply, we need n to be fixed, and uh, we need to be asking a yes-no type question. So here, n is 10, that's fixed, and each observation is a yes-no. So the binomial formula and the binomial distribution are applicable. So let's calculate the probability that exactly 6 out of 10 randomly sampled 18 to 20 year olds consumed an alcoholic drink. So we can use the binomial formula, which we see here, and we have to identify n, k, and p. We already said that n is 10, k, the value of interest is 6, and p is given in the problem as 0.7. So we can plug those in. We want the probability that x equals 6, so we're going to have 10 choose 6, that's n choose k, and then p is 0.7 raised to the k of 6, so we have 0.7 raised to the 6, then we have the 1 minus p, 0.3 raised to the n minus k, so that's 0.3 raised to the 4. To evaluate this, we can grab a calculator and Let's see, if we want to evaluate 10 choose 6, we can enter 10. And then we can go to math, over to PRB for probability. Choose number 3, which is NCR, that's N choose R. And we want 10 choose 6. So we have 6 here. 10 choose 6 is going to give us 210. So that's 210 combinations. Um, to have exactly 6 of one type and 4 of the other type, out within the group of 10. So when we evaluate this, we're going to have 210 times the 0.7 to the 6, 0.3 to the 4th, and we can simply evaluate that and we get 0.2. Part C, what is the probability that exactly 4 out of the 10 18 to 20 year olds have not consumed an alcoholic beverage? So now we want exactly 4. So when we apply our binomial formula, we want the probability that x equals 4, and we're going to do 10 choose 4. And since we're interested in not consumed, now our p is going to be 0.3. So we'll have 0.3 to the 4, and therefore 0.7 to the 6. If we evaluate this, we get the same answer, because of course if exactly 4 have not consumed an alcoholic beverage, then exactly 6 have. So it's a restatement of the previous question, equivalent. Part D, what is the probability that at most 2 out of 5 sampled 18 to 20 year olds have consumed alcoholic beverages? This one's a little more complicated because it's not asking exactly 2 out of 5. It's asking at most 2 out of 5. So first we have to ask ourselves how can at most 2 out of 5 say yes? How many can say yes, to have at most 2 out of 5 say yes. We could have 0, or 1, or 2. So those three cases uh, satisfy at most 2 of them said yes. So exactly 0 plus exactly 1 plus exactly 2. So in effect we'll be using the binomial formula three distinct times and then adding up those probabilities because it can happen this way or this way or this way where these are non-overlapping. The exactly zero times uh, we can do as simply 
doesn't happen, it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. So that's 0.3 to the fifth. Exactly one, that's going to be the five choose one. And then plug in the remaining probabilities, 0.7 to the one, 0.3 to the four. And then for the exactly two, we're going to have five choose two. This time raising the 0.7 to the two and the 0.3 to the three. And now we can evaluate these individually and add them up and we get 0 0.1631. Part E, what is the probability that at least one out of five randomly sampled 18 to 20 year olds have consumed alcoholic beverages? Again, it's not asking exactly one, it's asking at least one. So how many of them could have consumed alcoholic beverages to make it that at least one of them did. So at least one out of five means that you had one or two or three or four or five. You had at least one, so one or more. So exactly one or exactly two or exactly three or exactly four or exactly five. We could apply the binomial formula five times and add it up or we could do complements which would make it make the problem much easier to solve. So the opposite of at least one is none. If you don't have at least one, you have none. So instead of adding all of these probabilities up, we can do one minus the opposite. One minus the probability of none. One minus the probability of zero. So that's going to be one minus that it didn't happen with a probability of 0.3 raised to the five because there's five being sampled. And we evaluate this and we get 0.9976. That's it for this video. For more free resources, check us out at openintro.org.